ട്രാൻസ് കത്തീറ്റർ ട്രീറ്റ്മെൻറ്റ് ഓപ്ഷൻസ് ഫോർ സിവിയർ സിംറ്റമാറ്റിക് ട്രൈക്കസ്പിഡ് റിഗേഴ്സ് ഇസ് എൻ ഇവോൾവിങ് സയൻസ് വെരി ഓഫൺ ദീസ് പേഷ്യൻസ് ആർ വെരി സിക്ക് ആൻഡ് ഹാവിങ് മൾട്ടിപ്പിൾ കോമോബിഡിറ്റീസ് ഇൻക്രീസിംഗ് ദിയർ റിസ്ക് ഫോർ സർജിക്കൽ മാനേജ്മെൻറ്റ് ഓഫ് ട്രൈക്കസ്പെഡ് വാൾ ഡിസീസ് മെനി ഹാവ് അസോഷിയേറ്റഡ് എസൈറ്റിസ് ആൻഡ് ക്രോണിക് കിഡ്നി ഡിസീസ് എ കേസ് റിപ്പോർട്ട് ഇൻ ജാക്ക് കാർഡിയോവാസ്കുലർ ഇൻ്റർവെൻഷൻസ് ഡിസ്ക്രൈബ്ഡ് എ പേഷ്യൻറ്റ് വിത്ത് ടൊറൻഷ്യൽ ട്രൈക്കസ്പിഡ് റിഗേഴ്സിറ്റേഷൻ ആൻഡ് എൻവൈച്ച ക്ലാസ് ത്രീ സിംറ്റംസ് He had past history of coronary artery bypass graft surgery and atrial fibrillation. Echocardiography showed leaflet tethering and a 15 mm coaptation gap. Mild right ventricular dysfunction and preserved left ventricular function were noted. Computed tomography documented 49 mm diameter for the tricuspid valve. 48 mm evoke valve was implanted. using a 28 french evoke system by a transfemoral venous route guidance was by both transesophageal echocardiography and fluoroscopy there was mild paravalvular leak and a mean gradient of 2 mm of mercury after the procedure he had excellent clinical response and was discharged on anticoagulation follow up at 6 months documented nvha functional class 1 status increase in 6 minute walk distance by 200 meters and 45 point improvement on the minnesota living with heart failure questionnaire for assessment of quality of life this can be considered as a typical result of transcatheter tricuspid valve replacement by the investigational evoke valve as you can see case selection is after transesophageal echocardiography and computed tomography a multicenter observational first in human experience was published in 2021 25 patients with severe tricuspid regurgitation predominantly functional underwent evoc transcatheter tricuspid valve replacement in a compassionate use experience 92% technical success was achieved with no mortality during the procedure or conversion to surgery 30 day mortality was also zero 76% of patients were in nvha functional class 1 or 2 at 30 day follow up and the tricuspid regurgitation grade was 2 plus or lesser in 96% major bleeding was noted in 3 patients two patients required a pacemaker implantation and one patient required dialysis other options which have been tried for tricuspid regurgitation are triclip and pascal those were transcatheter edge to edge repair devices triluminate trial documented reduction of tricuspid regurgitation severity by at least one grade at 30 days in 86% of the 83 patients who had available echocardiogram data and imaging in that study tricuspid regurgitation was graded as mild moderate severe massive and torrential as per the clinical trials dot gov tricent study of the evoke valve was started in 2020 and is expected to be completed in 2025 with estimated enrollment of 200 patients tricent 2 pivotal trial listed at clinicaltrials.gov was started in 2021 and is expected to be completed in 2028 expected enrollment is 775 participants six month outcomes of the tricent presented at tct 2021 mentioned that the favorable 30 day outcomes were sustained at six months six month follow up was available for 56 of the enrolled 132 patients baseline tricuspid regurgitation grade was at least severe in 88% and 90% had atrial fibrillation two thirds of the patients were in functional class 3 or 4 heart failure prior to the device implantation procedural success was noted in 96.2% with 94.7% having right femoral axis At 30 days there were 3 cardiovascular deaths 
one renal complication, 22 severe bleeds and two major access site and vascular complications. Two had re-interventions and one had major cardiac structural complication. All cause mortality was 3.2% and new permanent pacemaker was required in 8 patients. Mild tricuspid regurgitation was noted in 49% at 6 months while the remaining had trace or none. Survival rate was 96% and freedom from heart failure hospitalization was 94%. 89% of patients were in functional class 1 or 2. 6 minute walk distance had increased by 56 meters and Kansas City Cardiomyopathy Questionnaire score increased by 27 points. The high bleeding rates are an important concern in this study. Many were not at access site and included urinary tract and gastrointestinal bleeding. Management of anticoagulation in this population with high bleeding risk probably needs modification. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe, like, share and post your valuable comment below this video.